Massachusetts in the paper. There was a news guy that was on the public access, a guy named Steve Teitner, okay, that got interested in me because, well, I came from a, a wealthier part of town. I come from Newton. We had a little bit of political connections, and I was crying inside. <laughs> and and uh, we were able to get a lot of press, and we were able to get people to look inside. And, uh, and started to talk about there needed to be changes. Some of us, as we organized and we developed this governmental structure and under Norfolk, we weren't in Walpole, we were the Norfolk prisoners, we were able to look at medical stuff, started looking at serious things, programming, things like that, started to think a little higher than candy bars in the store and stuff like that and TV. Uh, a little more than sports equipment. So we started to develop, with all the other prisoners, different committees to study the hospital section, uh, the various sections of the prison. Well, because of the politics at the time, the food was terrible in that place. It was disgusting. And we were getting this press, and this reporter was uh, uh, reporting a lot we happened to get a Senator Jack Backman who moved from, Newton. from Newton. <laughs> from Newton. <laughs> yeah, who yeah, we'll knew we'll we'll Russell's family to come into the prison and take a look at what was going on. Well, to, because of all the heat, I come up for parole, I get paroled. Yeah, you got it. Got me out. <laughs> and got me out, said, hey, you know what? For, unfortunate situation, kid, just got <laughs> in with the wrong people, and I got out, and, and, and but the structure was left. And uh, we were having hearings at the time uh, in the state, and I ended up being petitioned by the guys to go to the state house. In the meantime, the group in Norfolk got tighter together because I, w I became the chairman, and I had left my co-chairman in there, Richards, I believe, was the hmm. black fellow that was you know, my brother, uh, okay, that took over the chairmanship. And then a another group supported him that was all part of a group that we had gotten tight together. And what was happening was guys were getting paroled because they were the troublemakers yep. initially. <laughs> they wanted us out. Okay, this was in the initial days. This was before. <laughs> this was. This was before the Walpole guys, okay, before we, we did the Walpole thing, Norfolk. Well, it started to look like a good thing. A group of us got out, we were all together on the street, and we were running around like crazy people with different radio stations and stuff like that. And I got a call one day, and it was at the American Friends, and I got a call from the Reverend Ed Rodman, who called me in and a couple of other fellows that we were on, Andy Coles, John, John wasn't out there back then. Nah, Brad, right. um, he got out shortly He got after. shot right after Ramus and uh, David Collins, and, uh, and, 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 and I forget who else. Well, we got called, and I met Reverend Ed, and I sat down, and uh, he talked to us about what was going on, and uh, said, look, you know, uh, all this stuff is nice that you're doing and you're running around and getting all this TV, but you, you need to get yourselves together a little bit. And, uh, and that's basically what we did. Not only did we get together, we got together with the group that Ed uh, was involved with and the Ad Hoc Committee. And uh, out of that group, uh, what we were doing as a bunch of organizers, we were organizing each other's group. Like I had MPRA, uh, we had ECHO. Each one of us that were the leaders developed a small group. It wasn't a large group, but it sounded like it was lots and lots of people. And we were running around like crazy. And well, out of that, we started to develop the political process that went on. And, uh, I, I became part of the uh, Elam Commission, uh, 
uh, with, with several guys, and as, as each individual that was coming out of Norfolk, we were getting squats and we were developing a prison movement with the support of community people that Ed and uh, Mrs. Ryan and uh, a whole group of people were supporting us and then we were getting, we were speaking all over the place. Uh, and uh, well, the governor uh, started to change things. Uh, we, we uh, as uh, individuals, we went to different states. A couple of us went to different states as we wanted to get different prisoners involved. And we got people in different states to start to do things. Uh, and uh, this political movement uh, built up kind of rapidly. Aided by the revulsion in some circles around what happened at Attica. That, I was just going to say, Attica happened. Well, two things happened. Norfolk prison went off. That's right. Okay, Attica happened first. That's right. Attica happened first. Boom. They were exploded all over the news. Norfolk went off, and they shipped the guys in Norfolk, my, all my support group and everything. Inmate councils. It wasn't, it had not developed into the union type of thing at, at that time yet. Uh, it was something we were still thinking about. You know, we were going through a, a growth if you will, you know, uh, uh, evolution. evolution, that's the word I'm looking for. We were going through a growth and evolution. Some of us had experience with unions. I had some experience with unions and, and didn't really understand quite what was going on, but we knew we wanted to do something like that. Uh, once those explosions happened, then mass happened, and the uh, Walpole situation happened. Prisoners got moved around, and they reorganized, and then they did much like an inmate council, uh, okay, which was similar in Walpole that, that, uh, that happened. There were similar ways of representation in the, in, in the prisons. And uh, John McGrath uh, had been in Rhode Island, which Rhode Island was the first place that we had a little more success there in, with the union. Okay, we were doing the prison union thing. Rhode Island thought this is a good thing, uh, and uh, we do we do kind of a union thing. Uh, outside prisoners, we formed an association, uh, and we had the same titles and stuff like that. Uh, and then what? Basically, what happened? We ended up having an explosion, and uh, we had uh, uh, John Boone come to the state because uh, of the difficulty in prison. Uh, we had a governor that was, uh, uh, I thought, heartfelt. Uh, I was, uh, I, I know a little bit about the governor. I, I had a lot of support from, because of where I grew up and stuff like that. Uh, thought that uh, he had his faith in wanting to change stuff and, and, and do the right thing. And they brought up uh, uh, John Bull and appointed him and the rest is in the book. I mean, the rest, the rest, the rest is, in, uh, is is really in the book of, of what happened. Uh, and uh, but it's important, I think, for people to appreciate that this stuff didn't come out de novo. Right? Exactly. And the perspective that Russ brings is the counterpoint to what Jamie wrote in the book. Jamie did more of the institutional and reform end up at the Elam Commission and all of the official stuff. He's talking about from the inside the prison and then out in the community as people also began to agitate and build those linkages on the political level. So the two were yeah. happening in tandem. In tandem, yeah. And, and it was, uh, and, and I think the reason, what really, what really happened, which, which is bothered, but a lot of us did not understand the organizational stuff that we were doing. Uh, okay, we, we didn't know. We were limited in our growth they, we, as we were developing first. And then, uh, obviously, when I got with Ed, and we, we got with Ed and Phyllis, and then we, we got polished up a little bit. We started to really uh, understand what we were doing and trying to grow. And, uh, and the, we have not seen a movement like that in the country.
that was the uh, so that was really uh, a really really good. And then we were able to do a lot of stuff. Uh, Three thousand years of life. I don't know if you. Uh, saw the movie. A couple of them have it. We'll see it later. The whole class will see it later. We were able to uh, get grants and 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 had wonderful people that uh, got inside. They were doing a movie about us. They were doing about a movie about myself, Ronnie Coles, and and these offenders that were on the outside. And we okay, but at this, what happened was Walpole happened at the same time, and we were able to go in and get into Walpole. So we switched. And uh, John Boone uh, was was a, a wonderful guy. I was he was able to go in and sit with him and say, you know, John, will you let these people go in and film what's going on? And he said, Oh yeah, <laughs> go go ahead. I mean, that's how easy uh, it was, and, and and the access was was unbelievable. I mean, it was uh, it, it was really uh, for us at the time. Again, uh, it was. Uh, it was an un unbelievable time. Because the, the rule was ex convicts were supposed to be able to get back in the prison. Oh. Among other things. I was while I was on pro I was on parole while I was doing this stuff. I went before the Senate hearings and I was granted Senate protection by Jack Backman and uh, the Irish guy uh, oh. 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 Clarity? Oh. Clarity. Yeah. Clarity. Clarity. Okay. Uh, the parole board was going to send me back. They, they sent out a, a warrant to bring me back and send me to uh, they said, good, they said, you know, Walpole. And uh, so they brought me in. They had a big hearing. Well, when they brought me in, they had sent me back. And Ed was there, Phyllis Ryan, and they brought me before the parole board. And everybody was outside. and. Uh, you, know, see, you you can't associate with these people. I said, well, that's well, what I'm violating your parole. How are you violating your parole? They said, you, you, you guys can't be together. You're, you're, you, you know, this is a this is a violation. You, 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 you've got, we're going to send you back. So I didn't have a lot of time in being as arrogant as I was at the time. I said, well, go ahead. I mean, I'm going to go associate with them anyways. Go ahead, well, you're going to send me back. Okay. I, but guess what? We're going to be all over the news tonight, and you're going to send me back. And I, at the time, I was single parent, a couple of kids. I said, you're going to look like a bunch of fools. I said, and then look who's outside in the, out, out, I mean, I'm in an office like this, and all these people are out there, you know. Father Rodman's out there, Senator Backman's out there. I said, you, you're going to be all over the news tonight. They said, well, you need to stop doing this stuff. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not going to stop doing this stuff. They said, well, this is the same thing they had told me before. This is an unfortunate situation. And that's basically, that's kind of the fast story of, uh, you know, where, where we were and, and, and what we were trying to do. Uh, of course, he and Ralph and stuff like that went to war. <laughs> they went to war on the inside, and when we got inside and organized inside, uh, he spent a lot of time doing, you know, you, you know for us. I, once they shipped him out, then I was never, I was never able to get a letter into him for. She was married twice. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, tell them, maybe, maybe in that. Tell people what Marion is. So they appreciate it. Yeah, Marion was a replacement of Alcatraz. Right. Right. And uh, 1971, <coughs> I had shut the prison down. We'll get into that later on. But uh, I had stirred the pot, so to speak. And uh, they sent me out to Marion. And Actually, it was a mistake because in Marion, I met some very heavy political black individuals out of Chicago and got a good education from them. And I was out there for about seven months. And at the time, they referred to us as borders. We were state prison of borders. Because we were in a federal institution. Right. Yeah. And it was only 45 
borders, state borders, in the federal system, and all 45 of us were in Aaron, Illinois. So I got shipped out to there, and um, there was a game that was played. I was the chairman of the inmate council, and after they shipped me out, the institution said that, you know, we're going to have another election. And the inmate council said, no, no, Bobby DeLano is the chairman right. of the inmate council. So we're not electing anyone else. He said, oh, he wants to stay where he is. <laughs> so Jimmy Shutt said, well, listen, do this. You bring the little back here. Let him tell us that he's happy where he is, and we'll elect another chairman. Until that time, he's the chairman, and there was no negotiations until he gets back. And that's actually what got me back, is they held the line. Now, what happened prior to that, the inmate council is a tool the administration used to manipulate and control the prisoners. Uh, these guys got little stars in their forehead. Uh, usually the wise guys, dangerous individuals, were in on the board, and they got their special little uh, canteen stuff. They got their uh, kitchen stuff and whatnot. So we got down there. <laughs> and I had talked when I, we had the election, and before the election, this one guy, uh, the bear, who was notorious, um, he sucker punched me in the yard. And uh, I was a young guy, and I was in extremely good shape, and that was the biggest mistake in his life, was sucker punching me. I hit that way, and the only thing that really saved him from going out right away is I had a can of soda in my hand. And usually I wear combat boots, but I had sneakers on. All right? So as he hit me, I hit him more with an open hand as a can drop. And I gave him a beating of his life in the uh He's bald head and he had little noogies all over his head. And uh, this guy has a reputation as a serious killer on the street. Yeah, right. And he was. Uh, but you're in my territory. And uh, that impressed other guys that I wasn't scared of these people. And when we had the election at the board, I said, look, the only way I will accept chairmanship is you have to change the bylaws, and I have the authority to dissolve the board. If any of you start selling up, right, I have the authority to fire you, and I have the authority to absorb the board. And the guys are in there said, yeah, go for it. And when that happened, the institution that's <laughs> right. Because it gave me power. This was at Walpole. Yeah, Walpole. Bobby's, Bob, Bobby's inmate council is at Walpole. Mayan was at Norfolk, a football field. Yeah, different right. environment all total. So two, two different environments. But right. see, now uh, when uh, Boone comes in, and uh, it was kind of strange. Uh, Sergeant was a good governor, he was a Republican. But it, I, I was always baffled by the idea that why did you bring a black commissioner into Massachusetts when they were doing the Boston busing? Mm -hmm. Well, they were getting Racial ready. They were, getting, they were getting ready. They were getting, right. That tension, you could cut it with a knife. Uh, yeah. Even one of the leading that. newspapers, the Herald, mm -hmm. had as headline, Boone the Coon. Got away with it. Boone the Coon. That was the headline. That was the headline. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so the guards just, go out on strike, and... Uh, well, we had no black, excuse me, there was no black officers at the time. No, no, right? not, not a black. Right. Well, there was not, a couple not, out in the shops and stuff. Were they? Yeah. I, 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 I thought there was no correct. Yeah, no, there was just... So they were well hidden. Yeah. They were well hidden. Yeah. But the condition, right? We ended up going to war, and it's hard to explain to you, the guards were going out on strike. It's in the book, right? And they were anticipating a bloodbath, right? They were going out believing in their hearts that there's going to be a bloodbath. In an 18-month period, 20 people were murdered and more. The reason is in the book. They were medicating prisoners. We didn't realize it at the time, right? But now the guards are going out on strike. I pulled all the prisoners into the auditorium and explained to them, I said, look, this is what it's about. We have to all agree 
for the next six months, truce. 